Hello, I'm Chauvin. Uh, I do a lot of stuff. Um, I, oh, that's weird. I need to figure out what I'm gonna say on this. Um, hi everybody, I'm Chauvin. I uh, am an adult who plays with Legos, uh, so that's cool. Yeah, that's, um, that's something about me. Okay, hi, I'm Chauvin. I, uh, I'm gonna talk about Lego. So, uh, if you have been following my website, which I don't know why you wouldn't be, because everybody does that, um, you would know that I have been working on this project for a while to uh, build a Lego set that I remember from my childhood that was really sweet that I never owned, and so I'm going to build it today. Yeah, so uh, it's from 1996. Um, I always thought it was just the coolest, so I'm going to collect up the parts, both you know old and new, and see just how long it takes me to put the whole thing together. With 1,742 parts, uh, a lot of which are pretty rare and or not made anymore, it might in fact take a long time. Yeah, so it's called Giant Truck, in case you aren't already aware. It's uh, model number 5571. Yeah, I'm still not terribly far into the construction of the Giant Truck, but one thing is becoming very apparent uh, they just don't make light gray parts like they used to. That is, they don't make light gray parts like they used to in that they used to make them and now they don't. So that, you know, big shake up in the late early to mid mid 2000s, whenever that was. Uh, so, you know, they made a lot of subtle changes to the philosophy and changed around a lot of the parts they make. Uh, but in addition to that, they, you know, changed the color gray entirely. So this is important because the step that we're about to go into is 72% light gray. Yeah, um, so this is step six that I'm on of 50-something, uh, 50 58, I think. So uh, still pretty early on in the construction of giant truck, but step six is an important one because it's the one that I am currently on. Now things are getting technical. Get it? Technic? Because of the parts. So first off, the 1x2 black plates, um, they're not going to be a problem to find because, you know, if you've been reading my posts, which, why wouldn't you? Uh, these plates, the 1x2 is pretty much the most common Lego piece that exists. So you probably even have some. Um, so you know, that's pretty easy to come by. Uh, for example, let's just see, um, like, uh, you know, this from this year. The Milano spaceship has some in it. Um, the uh, uh, Bad Cops Pursuit, which is from this year, from the, the movie. It's got a couple in it. Um, let's see, this um, little elf workshop, that has some in it. Uh, what else do we got? Uh, how about uh, the Fun Fair, or the uh, Lego Mixer, the, uh, you know, Fairground Mixer. That's the name of it, Fairground Mixer. That's Got some parts, uh, some of those plates. And these are just sets that I have within arm's reach of my desk as I film this. Um, so, yeah, not all that's just to say the 1x2 black plate, not a problem to find. Um, so another easy piece is the black inverted 2x2 to 1x2 slope. Uh, these have been in 410 sets, um, which is a number I'm pulling right off the top of my head. 410 sets so far since 1976 when it came out. So. You know, it's another easy to find piece. Um, they've got them in 7161 Gungan Sub from 1999, um, 7150 TIE Fighter and Y Wing. One of these are all the sort of first generation Star Wars sets that came out back in 99. Um, 70812 Creative Ambush, which uh, actually I have this little guy from that set. The piece that I'm going to be using on this step actually I think came from 8412 Nighthawk slash Skywasp which actually shows up again later um, in this particular step which I think it's kind of interesting how certain sets just kind of show up multiple times to supply parts. So Technic axles haven't changed really at all since the first Technic sets that came out back in 1977 other than getting a few more length options the first page of Giant Truck's instructions implies that this set has lengths 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. Uh, measured, you know, that's how many studs long it is. 
uh, from the full parts list that I am theoretically not looking at, because that's cheating, you know, Giant Truck actually only uses 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. Uh, so I guess the diagram they have in the instructions is just something they put in all of the instructions, uh, no matter if they have the parts or not. Um, they didn't have any odd number lengths back in the day, so uh, other than three, they did have a three. So today you can get pretty much any length from two to like 15 or something, probably. So uh, yeah, Technic Axle 6, which is the one I need in this step, I need two of them, uh, might be the most common length that exists, and black, you know, is black, they haven't changed that, so that uh, is very easy to find. I have a lot of them. Now, I might be able to just find a couple of 1x3 light gray plates in the old archives. The 1x3 plate is ranked 26th overall and 21st by set, um, which I talked about rankings in my last post, which I'll probably link in this video. Um, so the 1x3 isn't totally uncommon, but light gray is making things difficult. So light gray 1x3s appeared in 160 different sets, including 2152 Robo Raptor and 5988 The Temple of Anubis, um, which both of those I have. Um, again, as I've mentioned, they are at my parents' house, which is a couple hours away. So I think it might be time for me to uh, come up with an excuse to go up and see them. And while I'm there, I might say hi to my parents, too. <laughs> so here's, here's the thing. Comes, we, we have this sort of dilemma that I think is going to become only more of a problem as I build more giant truck. So in those early aught aughts, the LEGO group phased out the old busted light gray color. Um, they replaced it with a new color that's, the, that's light gray, um, but it's a little bit more bluish. Yeah, in order to come up with all of the specifically old school light gray components that are in giant truck, I'm going to have to exclusively dip my fingers into those old time annals, if you know what I mean. Um, which, you know, that could be kind of a pain, because that's a lot of parts. Um, hopefully there won't be too many, but uh, just between you and me, there are. So, uh, so yeah, so the conundrum that comes up is, should I use more modern pieces to replace some of these, some different colored pieces, maybe some that are the newer gray instead of the older gray, because is it really gonna destroy the world if the colors aren't completely perfectly correct? Yeah, um, you know, the question is, what's my goal with this project? Am I trying to build an accurate and perfect and giant uh, recreation of this truck, or am I just trying to recreate it with the parts that I have available to me today? Yeah, that's the question. It's tempting to just kind of change all the colors around, obviously, um, to just, you know, whatever I have available to me in the old archive. <sighs> yeah, I'm thus tempted right now because 76015 Doc Ock Truck Heist uh, from this year, 2014, contains exactly two 1x3 plates in the newer light gray, light bluish gray. So, um, they're, you know, definitely not same model year, definitely not true per perfect color, but does it really matter? Yeah, I don't know. I won't have enough of these 1x3s for the whole truck as it is, even if I use modern ones. You know, not that I'm checking the full parts list or anything, because that, as I said, that would be cheating. Um, so, you know, I don't know how many of these that I will eventually need. If I did know how many of these I would eventually need, I would know that I would eventually need 18 of them, um, which is a lot. So it's a good thing I don't know that, because I don't know how I'm going to come up with that many, considering it's hard for me to find just these two for this one particular step. Uh, so I think the short answer is, screw it, I'm going to use the modern ones because who's going to stop me? For this particular step, I'm going to be using these modern ones from that Doc Ock truck heist, which is a Spider-Man set. Um, yeah, it's a pretty cool little car. So I guess the argument is, you know, I'm sort of doing this like a hot rod project in the garage. Um, the thing is, you know, a guy building a hot rod in, in his garage, you know, would want sort of same model year like gas blaster or oil later or whatever the, you know, whatever you call parts on cars. I don't know anything about cars. Um, 
you know, you'd want to have the same model year. You know, you'd want to have accurate stuff, but like the bolts and the nails and whatever else you'd need to hold them together, you know, I don't think that they're going to really want to make sure that those are the same model year. You might as well just go to the Home Depot. I don't know. Do they sell car parts at Home Depot? Uh, it's irrelevant. You know, the other argument is, of course, do you want to buy me all of the, uh, you know, 30 sets or whatever it is I'm going to need just to get enough one by 3 plates to put this giant truck together? Um, yeah, considering the only person who really is probably going to watch this or read my website is my mom, and considering that she has already pretty much bought me all of the Lego sets I had when I was a kid, I'm pretty sure that um, the answer is no. She's not going to be buying me any more sets. So, you know, I think that that'll, we'll leave it there. Um, so, moving on, the light gray 2x2 two two tiles. Um, we need two of those as well for this set. They're also pretty tough to find, as you might imagine. They were phased out after 2004 or so. Um, so yeah, I had a really hard time finding these in the old archive. I was worrying for a while that I would just have to use white ones and say they're internal, so who cares? Uh, because that's all I could find for a long time. Um, through careful reconsideration though, and uh, probably what amounts to days of digging through Legos, um, you know, with that telltale little digging through Lego sound. I did finally realize um, that I have some of these parts. So it turns out one light gray 2x2 tile appeared in 8828 front end loader, which is a pretty sweet set that I loved when I was a kid. Um, and if you read my last post on my website about uh, the previous step, um, for some reason I had two of these, two front end loaders. Um, so turns out I have two of these 2x2 two two light gray tiles. So fantastic. Yeah, so I was also able to dig up four middle school, I call them middle school Technic bushings. They're not technically old and they're not technically new. Um, they're called type 2 bushings. The old school type 1 had four teeth and were really super hard to take off of the stupid axles and it would hurt your fingers and then your fingers hurt and you would cry and it sucked. Um, so the geniuses at the Lego group removed two of the teeth, so now they only have two teeth and they're a lot easier to remove. Um, there are more modern ones. Um, they have, they've had several different kinds since these type twos. Um, specifically, they remove the weird teeth things that are at the top that also just serve to chew your fingers up when you're trying to pull on these. Um, so they got rid of those and, you know, further refine the uh, teeth inside to make sure that they are a bit easier to work with. And I'm sure that you are very fascinated to know of the different types of Lego Technic bushings that exist. So, Technic axle pins, moving on. Uh, we need two of those in the step. That's the... Uh, it's got the little clippy side on one end and then the little axle on the other side. Um, they've changed a little bit, but they really haven't changed a whole lot in the years, over the years. So uh, Technic pins used to be either light gray or black, depending on whether they were frictionless or firm. Um, so they would spin freely or not, depending on what color they were. Um, so you could kind of tell them apart. Uh, these days they're tan for the smooth and blue for, you know, not smooth. Um, so, you know, they've sort of changed colors a bit so that they're a bit easier to tell apart. So, uh, but I just happen to have a lot of them of all sorts of colors, so it's not a problem at all to find these, uh, from back in the day. So then, uh, the light gray 1x6 plate that is in this step, I think came from 9719 Robotics Invention System from 1998. And, uh, in case you're wondering, yes. That was the original Lego Mindstorms set, so, uh, you know, if you want to leave a comment about how awesome I am because I have that, feel free. Um, I was very proud to save up all of my money for probably a year or something to purchase that set, um, and then proceeded to build pretty much nothing with it because it turns out I'm not really any good. So, uh, yeah, but at least I have the parts now, which I can use to build this set that I can just read instructions for. Um, so, you know, it all works out in the end, right? Um, so the steering arms on this step, 
Um, they're among the parts that were discontinued in those various 2000s that were home to the big shakeup. Um, now, as a brief aside, um, they did actually make one set in 2004 that featured the steering arms in the newer light bluish gray. Otherwise, they all came in the old light gray. Uh, the really interesting thing about this is that it was a re-release of the predecessor of Giant Truck, 1995's 5541 Blue Fury. Um, it's just a little hot rod thing. So they renamed it 10151 Hot Rod, in 2004 when they re-released it. Um, kind of seems like the LEGO group kind of really just had no idea what they were doing in 2004. Um, or, you know, the story behind why they re-released this thing is probably pretty interesting. And we, we'll probably never know why, but... Uh, so, you know, there is this one set that exists that has the newer color. Um, but, of course, I don't have it. I'm not going to have it. Um, I don't know why I bring that up, other than that it's an interesting fact. So, uh, uh, beyond that, the light gray steering arm first appeared in, uh, 1981. So, uh, they've been around for a while, and that was basically the first steerable LEGO model that exists. Um, there was at least one that you could steer before the steering arm existed, but, uh, it probably was not very good, because it didn't have any steering arms. So... Um, you know, I had a handful of sets that had steering arms through the 90s, so, you know, I have a reasonable number of these. They were used for 20 years, so there are plenty of sets that have steering arms. Uh, the parts I'm using here could be from, again, 8412 Nighthawk slash Skywasp, where they weren't even used for steering. They were just kind of uh, structural components in that set. Or... 8A28 front end loader, which again, I had two of, so I've got plenty of these parts. It will probably end up being the only part that is used in Giant Truck that I actually have extras of. Um, so, you know, that's something. So, I have all the parts. Um, they're ready to go. Um, I will probably cut to video of me assembling them. still really kind of boring, and I've been wasting like 20 minutes of your time. I thought this light gray color might stop me. Turns out it almost did stop me, but I was able to dig up the parts, and I'm going to need to take a trip up to my parents' house to sort of harvest a bunch more uh, for the future because I'm going to need a lot more of these. Uh, so it still resembles a truck in exactly no ways, but we can start to make assumptions about what this part of the truck is that we're building because we have the steering uh, starting to come together so clearly it's the front of the truck that's exciting <sighs> step six is completed um, it's good to go we're ready to move on to step seven does it look like a truck no uh, how many parts do we use in this step in fact 18 pieces went into this step and i had 100 percent of them in the end so it's very exciting you know I think that it's uh, ultimately a good thing that they changed the color. I, I, I do not believe that LEGO would do something like this purely for the hell of it. Um, so, you know, I think that the new color is partly motivated by the fact that it looks a lot better. Um, if you look at older pieces next to newer pieces, they look, you know, old. They look more old than really they should look because it's sort of a tan. They, they really get sun damaged easily. And I think that's the other thing. I think the newer color is a lot more durable and it's gonna stand up better um, in the long run. And it just, you know, it's slightly bluish, so it's got sort of a cleaner appearance. Um, so, you know, I think that it's ultimately a good thing that we have this new color. Um, it does mean that it's kind of a pain because it's really difficult to compare some of these, especially if you're looking at the small pieces. Um, it's hard 
to make sure that you're using old ones. Um, but of course, that just makes me wonder why do I even care um, if you can't even tell the difference when you're specifically looking for it. Um, it doesn't really matter. This is the first video I've really ever done um, of this format, um, sort of a YouTube video. So if you like this video, then you should you know, click on that like button, like it, put a comment. That's, that's stuff people say, right? Comment, subscribe to me. I might do more of these videos um, because I think it's maybe a little bit more interesting than just reading some boring text. So, you know, until next time, um, hopefully it was great to see me. Uh, I would say it was great to see you, but it wasn't because I don't see you because you look like a camera. I've just been staring at this camera. So, uh, but otherwise, I hope it's great to see me and hopefully you enjoyed this little video and uh, I will, uh, you know, hopefully you'll see me soon. So until next time, keep building my friends.